Hey everybody, this is Thomas Wells, The Body Mechanic. I wanted to talk a little bit today about sciatica. Uh, that's one of the most common things that brings people into my office. And there are a lot of misconceptions around sciatica. Uh, first and foremost, that it is pain that actually radiates down the leg, so from the back down through the hamstrings, through the calf, into the foot. And that's not actually what that is. So first thing, I just want to explain uh, that, that pain, that nerve pain in the back of the leg basically falls into one of three categories. Uh, it's either sciatica, pseudosciatica, or lumbar radiculopathy. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between the three. So sciatica is irritation, compression, tension uh, on the sciatic nerve, which is uh, one of the largest nerves in the body, and it runs down the back of the leg, coming from uh, nerve roots at L4 to S3 the lumbar and sacral spine, and it innervates most of the muscles on the back of the, lave, uh, back of the leg, but from a sensation standpoint, it only innervates below the knee. So pain that you're getting down the back of the leg is not the sciatic. Uh, if you're getting pain down the back of the leg, it's probably from the lumbar nerve roots, and you're probably dealing with lumbar radiculopathy, which is often a result of some sort of uh, intervertebral disc problem. Uh, whether that be a bulge or herniation, uh, just irritation, etc. Uh, and then you have your pseudosciatica. Pseudosciatica is a sciatic nerve problem, but that doesn't emanate from the spine. So that could be like piriformis entrapment is probably the most common one. Uh, in piriformis entrapment, you have the piriformis muscle, which is one of your hip rotators, and the sciatic nerve runs deep to that. So if that muscle is spasmed, uh, cramped, tight, etc. it can compress on that nerve and irritate it. Uh, the nerve can become adhered to it via adhesions and scar tissue. Um, and another thing that can actually happen is, and this is a congenital thing, the, you can be born such that the sciatic nerve actually perforates the piriformis muscle and it surrounds it. And uh, folks with that are def definitely likely to have problems with pseudosciatica down the road. Now what sort of treatments I do or what sort of corrections I do in the office uh, depends on which, which of those someone's dealing with. Sometimes it's a combination of the three. Um, but usually a big component of that, a big component of freeing up any of those is dealing with adhesions. Because regardless of where that nerve irritation or entrapment started, it tends to affect the entire pathway. Uh, so I have to kind of assess for, from spine to tips of the toes to make sure that whole nerve pathway is clear, uh, that we have good mobility of the nerve. Uh, if I'm dealing with radiculopathy, I often have to deal with the lumbar compression element as well. Uh, so there's things I can do uh, from a muscular stabilization standpoint uh, to alleviate the body's uh, active compression that it's doing on the lumbar spine and those discs as well as things to do at home to deal with uh, the consequences of having had long-term lumbar compression, types of home decompression and whatnot. With pseudosciatica, where that piriformis is involved, oftentimes just getting the piriformis disengaged uh, by correcting some of the involved muscle imbalances can clear that up pretty quickly. Uh, pseudosciatica is definitely the easiest of the three to clear up, and it, it's, it is the main problem in a good percentage of cases. The problem is, regardless of where, where that nerve irritation started, it'll tend to irritate the entire nerve tract. Once that inflammation is there, adhesion tends to set in. So if you have a problem in one spot, it tends to create problems in other spots as well. So again, that's why you have to clear up kind of the whole tract if I want, if I want to get total resolution. Uh, so if you're noticing any um, burning or tingling down the back of the leg or in the foot or the calf, uh, if you're noticing weakness in the back of the leg or difficulty, uh, difficulty raising your leg up or uh, stretching your calves, um, difficulty remaining in a seated position, oftentimes pressure on the back of the thighs 
will really cause uh, irritation, inflammation. So riding in cars, sitting in chairs, that'll tend to ir irritate it quite a bit. Uh, again, regardless of which of those three uh, radiculopathy, pseudosciatica or sciatica that the person has. Uh, if any of that sounds familiar to you, uh, I would def definitely contact me or schedule an appointment because that that's all treatable stuff. That's all stuff that can be helped. Uh, between between the, the neurologic corrections, between the scar tissue work with active release, uh, using using cold laser, class 4 laser to deal with the, the nerve inflammation and healing, uh, it can definitely be helped, and uh, I'd like to help you. So I'll, I'll release further videos down the road to deal with uh, nerve flossing and other techniques that you can do to help alleviate this at home, but I figured this would be a good introduction, so... Uh, until next time.